Well, this video's taking an unexpected turn. Listen to that. Guys, we are 800 miles from home in the middle of Florida. At least it's nice out. Guys, aloha and welcome back to the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. Welcome back to the channel, my piece of paradise in here. Quite the ugly week here in Texas. It has literally been raining all week and it's gonna rain again tonight. So we're gonna do this quick before it starts pouring again. So what we have going in the Silverado today is a part from JLT Performance. This is something I have wanted to put on this truck for a little while, but there is some chatter in the forums about this part voiding warranties, which what we have going in the 2020 Silverado is an oil catch can. Yes, so not only today are we installing this part, but we're actually gonna take it for a pretty rigorous test over 3,500 miles to be exact. Yes, we're going on a cross country road trip and you guys are coming along for the ride. And then at the end, check if it's actually done anything for my new truck. And I'm assuming it's going to because I've put these on before and they work quite well. I have never put it on a Silverado before, but I do know that it's a great part to put on your vehicles because these engines are unfortunately set up to fail. And by the way, if you guys are new to the garage and the channel, welcome to my little we call it paradise here. All these vehicles and even the garage are just built in itself. If you have any questions on any modifications across the vehicles or the garage, all those details are on the channel and consider subscribing below and being part of all that fun. All right, so what we have over here from JLT Performance is an oil catch can or can also be called an oil separator. It has a pretty simple and incredibly important job. What these oil catch cans do, for lack of a better word, is hijack the PCV system that comes stock on these trucks. The PCV system is a positive crankcase ventilation system. It ventilates positive pressure from the crankcase back into the intake to be burned once again through the motor. And if that was just air, that wouldn't really be an issue. But what happens is, is you get a lot of pressure build up and with that pressure comes a lot of contaminants. It could be oil, it could be blow by, it could be fuel, it just could be nasty crud being recirculated back to the engine, which you don't want. JLT Performance, what they do is this piece here, it catches, in fact, all those contaminants before they go back through the engine. As you can see here, we have kind of a baffled area where the pressure seeps through. The oil will drip down into this catch can and then the air will simply be circulated right back into the engine. Very simple, straightforward part, but no manufacturer puts these stock on their trucks or cars for that matter. Now the difference between a port injected and direct injection is significant as well. Since this one is direct injection, there's a lot of advantages to it. You get better power, better efficiency, but you lose the benefit of something called fuel wash. When you see companies advertising their fuel, call it Chevron with Tecron, Shell with V-Power, the additives within their fuel are detergents. They, in fact, clean your engine while they run. And running over those intake ports is one of the benefit factors of them actually cleaning. And you lose that when you have direct injection. So the 07 Silverado, the last generation of the port injected, also has a PCV system. But I don't have a catch can because it's on this truck I'm much less worried because in fact, we have that benefit of fuel wash over the top of those intake ports. Now getting this thing ready for installation is pretty straightforward. It's nice, JLT Performance actually provides this ready to go. All the fittings, all the hoses, all connected, and literally all you do is hook up the bracket to the top of the oil catch can and install it on the truck. Now I will say that if your truck is stock, it will not look like this in here. You'll have that big intake box. We do run an aftermarket cold air inductions, cold air intake system. And fortunately, since this is an aftermarket system, we don't have to worry about moving that box to access the hoses here. We have one hose to deal with and it's this one right here. We have a clip on this side and then one clip right on the other side. We're basically gonna remove this hose altogether. The oil catch can from JLT is gonna be mounting up right here where our coolant reservoir is. Two hoses on the catch can. We have one longer one which goes to the intake manifold valve, and then the shorter one goes to the valve cover. What we're going to be 
doing now is taking this truck all the way from here in Texas to the east side of Florida. I'm gonna get some surfing in at Cocoa Beach. We're gonna go to Disneyland. Guys, it's been a heck of a year and I've taken my family actually on a vacation. And we're gonna bring you along for right over the next few minutes. I'm gonna show you the effectiveness of this catch can by removing that catch can as soon as we get back to show you how much contaminants this thing actually caught. Okay, yeah, back kid. It's work. It's work the mommy truck. That's not going anywhere. Alright guys, we made it to our first fill up and the weather is horrible as you can see. Okay, my lens is fogging up, there's nothing I can do about it. But the catch can seems to potentially be having some issues. So I noticed before we left that there was a loud hissing noise when the truck was running and it seemed like a vacuum leak. And I sat there trying to trace it down for nearly an hour. I took it apart, put it back together, took it off, put it back again, and just unfortunately could not figure out where the hissing was coming from. And then I put the old PCV hose back on, the stock one anyways, and unfortunately the hissing went away, meaning the modification caused either the vacuum leak or the hissing, whatever's going on. And I also did notice I'm getting about two MPG less than I typically do on the highway. So I'm hoping that this part did not cause a vacuum leak. Here's my issue guys, 16.1 MPG. I should be getting 19 to 20. I'm hoping that this horrible fuel mileage is from the bad weather, but it's not windy. It's just a little bit wet. <sighs> All right, we're gonna go for probably another 200, 300 miles. And if this does not improve, I did bring the stock part and the stock part's going back on the truck. This is frustrating. All right, fuel efficiency got a little bit better. I was traveling about 10 miles an hour slower that last stretch and we got about 18 to 18 and a half, but it's still not nearly what it was. So we're actually gonna swap back <laughs> and pull out basically what we did today. And we're gonna put back the old PCV systems and then see if it gets any better. Hopefully it does, but uh, I'm just not super comfortable continuing. I think, I think we have a huge vacuum leak. Gonna swap that back, get back on the road, see if it does anything. Hopefully it does. Well. Hopefully it doesn't. I don't know. So let me show you what I'm talking about in terms of the vacuum leak I think I have. Listen to that. It's not the hose. I think it's the fitting at the end. Ugh. How this video is taking a turn of events at 3 a.m. in the middle of nowhere, Louisiana. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my Phillips screwdriver. I'm just gonna pop those screws out of the top, pull the catch can, I'm gonna undo the clips, and then put the old PCB system back in, and then see if our mileage increases, which is gonna be interesting if it does. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Note to self, do not forget the camera sitting right there. Oh, it's gonna be bloody hot. There's two. One. Oh, it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. I can't see a thing. Let's see if it still makes noise. Alright, let's try this again. We got our stock hose back on. I'm so happy I brought that with us. All right, let's see if my efficiency goes up. So 234.7. We're gonna divide that by 13.034. It's getting barely 18 miles a gallon. We're going really slow, so that should be easily above 20. So once again, and what time is it now? It is 3.53 a.m. And both my kids are up. Oh, it's gonna be a long night. All right, guys, we made it somewhere in the middle of Mississippi. Good news is everything's running just fine, just dandy. And I actually got a chance to peek in here at my catch can to take a look at if it was actually doing anything while it was leaking. And uh, 
It has. So let's take a quick peek here. What? Don't mind the screaming kid. <laughs> all right, 500 miles. Look at all that nasty crap. Yeah, so it was definitely doing something, which is kind of cool. But even looking there, look at all that nasty, nasty gunk. So it was, in fact, catching stuff. I will also say the, the mileage didn't change substantially, so it might just be like the driving condition we are in. Good news is the JLT camera is working. It's just, I think one of my fittings is bad. That's that for now. We'll figure out something when we get there, but we are four and a half hours from our destination. We're at Lee's Donuts in Mississippi, somewhere in Mississippi. We're in a tunnel! And because we're in a tunnel... Destin, Florida, day two. Actually, day two is the day we are leaving. By the way, the truck is a freaking champ. This thing is running so good. It is so comfortable. It did so good over that long distance at high speeds without the, the catch can. We're back to 20 miles per gallon, which is really good. We're averaging 17 to 18 with it on. I just don't know. I think we're going to do when we get to Orlando, which is our next destination. I'm gonna go find an auto zone and see if they sell that PVC hose. And actually what I'm gonna try to do is modify the hose to fit the catch can and use like a hose clamp. That way the clamp, which is the area I think it was leaking from, will be taken care of. I hope that's the case anyways. And if that's the case, and if it does fix it, we'll take the catch can on the way home. But for right now, we're running stock system. All that crap is being recirculated into the engine, which I hate. But there's nothing else we can do at this point. But uh, saying goodbye to Destin. Bye, Destin. Love Destin, Florida, by the way. And now we are on our way to Orlando. Today is hubby's birthday. Happy birthday. You're using your teacher voice, and it's freaking me out. <laughs> he loves it. Well, welcome to somewhere in Mississippi. We actually did not end up finding the right part for the truck. Uh, it turns out that auto parts stores don't typically put stores around resorts, which makes complete sense. There's a few auto parts stores by our hotel tonight, and I'm gonna see if I can find something there. If not, we're gonna go all the way back home with just the stock PCB system, and then figure something out when we get there. I have no idea at this point. This was supposed to be an easy install, go, show you guys how good it is. It's, it hasn't been that way. And this truck is just top notch. I love this thing. Been averaging 19 miles a gallon. 19 miles a gallon in the pickup truck. Lifted pickup truck. <laughs> See you guys late tonight, I guess. Maybe. Well, we're back. Here's the situation. We were able to make it all the way back home and we were actually over a week from the last clip ending. As you can imagine, taking a week off of work, I had a few thousand unread emails this week I had to get caught up on, that wasn't fun, but we're finally back to finish this truck up. And I was finally able to reach out to JLT to understand what the heck is going on and why this old catch can had such a horrible vacuum leak and I had a hard time tracking down exactly where it was coming from. So first off, JLT, thank you for the response because I emailed you at 8.30 p.m. And when I woke up the next morning at 5, I already had a response. And this is an American company, meaning they're responding to my emails overnight. That's huge. Thank you, guys. But what JLT was able to explain is these stock Silverados have just a really noisy PCV system. If you look at the stock hose here, you'll notice a lot of insulation. Now, I thought that was for heat dissipation or just heat management. It's not, it's just for the noise. There's a lot of insulation on there because it keeps the noise down. There's a lot of vacuum noise or air passing through there. It creates a lot of noise. So that keeps it down. So what happens when you install an aftermarket oil catch can, one, you don't necessarily have that insulation on your hoses. But this canister here where air is passing through here, oil is being separated, dropping to the bottom of the can and air is being recirculated back where it needs to be. So this almost acts like a speaker. It amplifies that vacuum noise. That's why I was hearing such a loud hissing and also why when I held the line with the rag or my hand, 
that hissing noise would actually decrease in volume. So what I'm gonna try to do is a little bit of a Lone Star Hawaiian modification. Don't know if it's gonna work, but this is a high temperature insulation tape. This is typically meant for wire harnesses, but I'm gonna try to wrap both of these inlet and outlet hoses in this tape to see if it helps in bringing that hissing noise down. Because to be honest, I don't wanna be listening to that every day. You can't hear it from inside the cab, but outside the cab, you can in fact hear that hissing noise. So I'm gonna wrap all this up, see if I can insulate it myself. Hopefully it works. And they're gonna pop that thing back on here, drive for a few more days and show you how much crud has already been caught in that catch can. It's, it's kind of surprising. All right guys, if this is gonna work, this is gonna freaking work. I used the entire roll on these two hoses. So we have about five to six passes on each of these. So I'm hoping that amount of insulation is gonna cut down on the vacuum noise. We still got our mounting bracket here, so I put those two screws back in. So let's knock that out real quick. I mean, guys, come on. Look at that. Look how thick that insulation is on the line. Now is the moment of truth. Please work. be good I think it might have worked I think so I don't hear the hissing first off I love it when my dumb ideas sometimes work but they don't always work perfectly so it still hisses there's still a slight hiss take a quick listen but if I compare that back to the earlier clip of the hissing Yeah, that's quite better. Now, one thing I do need to figure out and something I still have not figured out is why my fuel efficiency decreased over that first leg of the trip. I really don't know the explanation there. It could have been the roads are really wet. Driving through water takes more power than it does driving through, call it dry ground. Could add some wind. So what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna drive around with this for about a week. After that week, we're pulling right back in the spot. We're gonna open that cash can for you guys and show you what's in there. You might be surprised how much a brand new truck like this needs a catch can it's it's bad all right see you in a week it's time yes it's time that'll work by the way don't tell my wife i'm using her glass but it is finally time guys welcome back a week later the fuel mileage is about what it was it's really hard to tell just because the daily driving has changed since it is summertime now so my wife's not doing the daily commute to school and back, so it's just kind of putt-putting around town. And, uh, what's up, dude? You gonna help me? You don't need this. Okay, so the engine is still a little bit warm. We just got back from a drive, so this is gonna be kind of uncomfortable to pull apart. But, uh, we're gonna unscrew the bottom of the catch can. Essentially what you wanna do is this, and every few thousand miles. What's in that catch can is probably about 900 miles for us. Warm! Warm! Oh, it's hot. Wow, look at that. Hot diggity dog. Cheers guys. All of that would have been thrown back over the top of the intake ports and be burned once again. That's not good and that's only, that's less than a thousand miles guys. Think of the 16,000 miles I put on this truck and how much of that has run over the top of the intake ports. And it also continues to make me question why manufacturers don't from the factory put these catch cans on these vehicles. Over time, this will stick to the intake ports. It will build up. It will rob horsepower and decrease longevity of your engine. Whoa. Yeah. My wife's going to be ticked that I use her cup, but she typically doesn't watch the video all the way through. So I'm hoping to this point in the video, my wife doesn't see this, but if she does, I'm sleeping on the couch. Thank you very much, guys. This video did not go as planned. That drive was supposed to be straightforward. Very easy, I was supposed to come back, take it off, show you all the crud on the inside. And for one reason or another, it didn't end up like that. But I hope you enjoyed this one. If you wanna check out JLT Cash Cats, I'll put a link in the description below. I am not sponsored by JLT. This is not a partnership with them. I'm just genuinely wanting a oil catch can in that truck 
so I would recommend them. Yes, the vacuum noise is a little bit loud, louder than I would want it to be, but if you want to take care of it, there are, is ways to insulate those lines to decrease the vacuum noise. But with all that said, this is the Trail Boss. This is Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. As always, we'll see you in a few days for our next video. Until that day comes, y'all take care and aloha.